Connecting you to top evangelical scholars discussing the important theological issues of our day. This is Converse with Scholars. So, uh, let me just plunge in here by quoting the atheist philosopher David Papineau. Uh, he declares that nearly everyone nowadays wants to be a naturalist. Uh, there's uh, uh, another uh, Brit, uh, uh, John Lucas, who is a Christian, but he says that philosophical naturalism is the orthodox view amongst Western intellectuals. And if we want to talk about what naturalism is, uh, well, I think Carl Sagan captured it very nicely in his book, the, uh, book uh, the book called Cosmos, in which he said, the cosmos is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. Kind of reminds you of the book of Revelation, you know, the, uh, you know, God or, or Jesus, uh, you know, the one who was and is and is to come. Uh, but the gist of naturalism, metaphysical naturalism, is that the space-time universe, which can be studied by the physical sciences, is all that there is. There is no uh, super nature, no uh, God, no miracles, uh, no soul, and so forth. Uh, and naturalists will often argue that, well, this is a simpler worldview than theism. It requires, after all, fewer entities, and, uh, and, and you don't need to appeal to God to explain the way things are. God is an unnecessary metaphysical fifth wheel, uh, a kind of appendage uh, to explain. We don't need to resort to God. Uh, nat nature will do just fine. Uh, science can help us to discover uh, the truth. And usually there are, if you want to characterize naturalism, we were thinking about uh, three areas. And the, and the first one is in the area of knowledge or epistemology. Uh, that, and it's interesting that when, we, when it comes to knowing things, according to the naturalist, uh, there tends to be this understanding that, nat that knowledge involves uh, nothing more than what contributes to our survival. Uh, that more and more people who are uh, claiming to be naturalists don't see the issue of truth as being important when it comes to knowledge. Typically, knowledge is defined by, uh, at least includes truth as part of its definition, but a, a lot of these, uh, what are called uh, naturalistic epistemologists, uh, will say we don't really have to uh, understand, we don't have to talk about knowledge as involving truth, but simply knowledge involves you know, how human beings uh, typically think, how they come to believe the things that they do, and so forth. Uh, and, and also, uh, naturalism tends to hold to ca certain causal explanations in a mechanistic sort of way, that, there's, that all the events from the Big Bang uh, until now, even the choices that we make today, uh, that there is an implied determinism. Uh, that, uh, that is uh, assumed. Uh, naturalism's grand story of origins is that our universe has had this physical, impersonal, mechanistic beginning, uh, and that these, this physical cause and effect scenario describes all the events uh, that have taken place since the Big Bang. Uh, and so there's this assumption that, uh, that libertarian freedom, that is that human beings can make choices that are not uh, contingent upon uh, a series of cause and effects that have gone before. That is, the buck stops with the agent. The human being can make choices, uh, even though he's influenced by certain things, even motives and so on, those don't determine his choice, even if they influence it. But, uh, but naturalists tend to downplay any sort of libertarian freedom because, you know what? It sounds like there might be a soul that exists. If you talk about libertarian freedom, uh, freedom to, uh, in a sense, rise above those influences, then, uh, you, in a sense, you're going outside of the naturalistic realm. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, the entities that exist, uh, with, according to the naturalist, uh, is that they're physical things. Uh, if there is anything that is not strictly physical, then it, 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 it just is uh, an illusion. Uh, these sorts of things don't exist. Uh, everything that exists has to depend upon the physical for its own existence. Now, with that background of naturalism in mind, uh, I wanted to quote what uh, a philosopher of mind at Brown University, Jaguan Kim, says. He says that naturalism is imperialistic. It demands full coverage and exacts a terribly high ontological price. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, what Jaguan Kim means is that if you're going to bite the bullet and commit yourself to naturalism, you have to recognize that there are a lot of implications that go with it. You can't simply borrow from 
a Judeo-Christian worldview which talks about human rights and dignity, uh, which talks about uh, the existence of evil uh, and moral obligations and so forth. Uh, there is going to be a huge distinction between what the, Jew, what the Judeo-Christian worldview holds and the naturalist holds, and frankly, the naturalistic worldview can be very frightening and stark and uh, and and uh, and 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 uh, just you know for some people very uh, dangerous and scary sounding. Uh, now that's uh, a little bit of the background to naturalism, and we're going to explore some of these things. But uh, I suppose we can perhaps lighten things up a little bit uh, by talking about the movie Groundhog Day. Uh, now some of you may uh, have seen this movie. It's uh, just a great one. My wife and I and our kids we watch it every uh, Groundhog Day. Uh, surprise, surprise. And uh, in this film, uh, the arrogant, uh, self-centered weatherman Phil Connors, played by Bill Murray, uh, is trying to get to know Rita, uh, who's played by Andy McDowell. And, and they're covering the Groundhog Day festivities in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. And so they're at the Tip Top Diner. Uh, and so Phil asks Rita, he says, so what do you want out of life anyway? And he uh, starts to get a little bit too personal about uh, her boyfriends and so forth. And so Rita asks Phil about what he wants. And so here's a little bit of how their exchange goes. So Phil says, what I really want is someone like you. And Rita says, please. Uh, Phil says, well, why not? What are you looking for? Who's your perfect guy? And Rita says, well, first of all, he's too humble to know he's perfect. And Phil says, that's me. He's intelligent, supportive, funny. And Phil says, intelligent, supportive, funny. Me, me, me. He's also romantic and courageous. And Phil says, me also. And Rita says, he's got a good body, but he doesn't have to look in the mirror every two minutes. And Phil says, I have a great body, and sometimes I go months without looking. And Rita goes on, he's kind, sensitive, gentle. He's not afraid to cry in front of me. And Phil says, this is a man we're talking about, right? And Rita goes on, he likes animals and children. Oh, and he plays an instrument, and he loves his mother. And Phil says, whew, I am really close on this one. Really, really close. Well, as, you, as, the film, uh, as, the, as the film builds up to this point, you know that even though Phil is quite funny, uh, he's too full of himself to be humble, supportive, fond of animals and children, etc. Uh, and what's funny is that the me, me, me doesn't describe Phil at all. Now, why am I talking about Groundhog Day? Well, when it comes to determining which view, naturalism or theism, that a personal creator exists who uh, is distinct from the universe, who has made human beings in his image, who has made us with dignity and worth and so forth, that when we're looking at which worldview or outlook on life is the more likely, naturalism or theism, that uh, we can go through a large list of items and say, God, God, God. In other words, God makes better sense than naturalism when we talk about the origin and the fine-tuning of the universe, about the emergence of first life and consciousness, uh, about the existence of human rights and dignity, or objective moral values, or free will, or human rationality and, and beauty, and, and even the existence of evil. That these are best explained by a personal God, a good God a self-aware being. And so what we ask when we come to these various uh, phenomena is, uh, you know, for example, when it comes to consciousness, you know, we have to ask the question. Uh, you know, we all take for granted that consciousness or awareness exists. Now, if we look at the theistic context versus the naturalistic context, well, which viewpoint makes the best sense out of consciousness. 